Hello and welcome back and welcome to today's video where I'm hoping to make the subject of wireless access points interesting. It's a bit of an uphill struggle I'll be honest with you but today I want to talk about the brand new Unify U7 wall and the brand new Unify U7 light. These are brand new access points that are designed to follow up upon the existing range of Wi-Fi 7 equipped and ready access points in the Unify portfolio. Knocking out at just $99 for the light and $149 there for the wall mounted box. Now both of these devices support both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz as well as with thanks to Wi-Fi 7 multi-link up or MLO, meaning you can take advantage of multiple connections at any given time. But some of you may already have noticed one massive downer there and that is that unlike the existing U7 Pro and U7 Pro Max, these do not support six gigahertz frequency. And that, again, you don't necessarily have to have six gigahertz frequency opened up on Wi-Fi 7, but one of the biggest advantages that Wi-Fi 7 grants you is that in Wi-Fi 7, you can take advantage of the, all of the multiple streams simultaneously. You can have one connection from your laptop to an AP or a router that has the 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, and six gigahertz connections all running in 80, maybe um, uh, 160 or 320 megahertz packets. Neither of these allow for that. So yes, they're more affordable, but make sure you are clued up on that before. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna talk about the significance of that in more detail. But first up, talking about the light version here, this is designed for walls and ceilings, has 115 square meter coverage, again, across those uh, dual band coverage. It is PoE, it's got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection there on the rear, and will require 13 watts PoE for maximum power consumption when in use. Obviously, that is just what you're gonna need to deliver at the maximum end, almost certainly it will dip much lower than that during domestic non-access uh, uh, times. Now, in the case of this one, is when scales things up the wall, which again, is 50% more expensive at $149. But with that, not only have you got, alongside a 2.5 gigabit ethernet PoE, you have an additional two more ethernet ports there, both of which are 2.5 GBE, and one of them has got PoE pass-through. So although this one is also 13 watts, that will increase by uh, adding an additional PoE device acting as that PoE pass-through, and both of these can be utilized as mesh APs as well if you use a PoE power input that you can factor in, not just connect it into an existing PoE device like the fiber gateway we've talked about before. You can utilize these with PoE input and then alongside that, you can then just have them as mesh nodes along the line. But the advantage is that this one adds two more physical LANs to your network remotely. Now, both devices support over 200 clients connected to them at each mesh point, and obviously you can use multiple of these expanding from your initial Unify base there, from Unify Express maybe, or the UCG fiber that I just showed you there. Now, they support 20, 40, 80, 160, and 240 megahertz uh, connections across the two of them. But again, because of that lack of the six gigahertz stream there, it's not able to take advantage of 320 megahertz traditionally. There just isn't the available frequency bandwidth. And that really is the bummer there because again, these are not trying to replace the Pro and the Pro Max. The Pro and the Pro Max, as the name suggests, both of which are trying to give so much more coverage, so many more active connections, and are tri-band APs, which is hugely important. These, on the other hand, I would argue are designed for smaller mesh networks or across multiple floors. But how do, how do those specifications translate into active use? In order to understand just what the U7 wall and the U7 light bring versus that of the traditional U7 Pro AP, I decided to set up a few fun little experiments. Now, before we go into a, a huge amount of detail about all of these, there's a few things to keep in mind. Number one, this is with these APs all set to default settings. I ran the optimization built into Unify's uh, controller once, so I set up each test and then I ran the optimization, but I didn't do any manual tweaks. It would have been very easy to hard lock devices to specific radio frequencies and bands. I wanted to make sure we let the devices do their own thing. Also, both devices were connected to with a $20 Wi-Fi 7 USB connected to my Windows 11 laptop, and therefore, the Wi-Fi 7 access was pretty much managed 
by both this USB device and the connected AP that I was on. Finally, when it came to uh, the setup, I'm using a UCG fiber connected to my gigabit internet. It's a thousand megs down, 100 megs up, and that's megabit, of course. Uh, on top of that, uh, later on, when it came to the file transition, I was using a Terramaster, uh, an F4424 Max, and that was with a 10 gig media file. It was actually uh, 10,587 megabytes, if you wanna be precise. So from my first test, I set each node up, one after the other, not simultaneously, uh, to the UCG fiber and with a 10G NAS connected via the 10G port on the UCG fiber. And alongside that, I had a 10 gig file. I then set up the Windows machine 10 meters away in a clear run in, inside a building, and then from there, conducted a few tests. Now, one, I went ahead and downloaded that 10 gigabyte file there. Um, now, on the U7 Pro, not the Max, I didn't have a Max to hand, uh, it took three minutes and 18 seconds. It took four minutes and 31 seconds on the U7 Wall, and on the U7 Lite, it took three minutes 38 seconds there. So the quickest was obviously the U7 Pro, and the Wall was the next quickest there. Now, you may have noticed that during the course of that transfer, uh, the performance dip in there and the bandwidth, thanks to the U7 Pro taking advantage of the 320 megahertz packets and access to the six gigahertz and over MLO, the result was that I had 2.8 gigabits per second between the laptop and that U7 Pro AP. Whereas the U7 Wall and the U7 Lite, both of them, because it was a five gigahertz band there, and in one case, taking advantage of dual connections on MLO, um, it was 1.4 gigabits per second. So obviously it was quickest on the U7 Pro, which shouldn't come as a huge surprise, but the U7 Wall and the U7 Lite weren't that much slower. In particular, the U7 Lite was you know, only around 20 seconds slower between the two of them. And when I did speed testing via OOKLA or OOKLA, I can never remember how to pronounce that, obviously the U7 Pro was the quickest at 689 over 79, but in the case of the U7 Wall, it was 491 over 82, and in the case of the U7 Lite, it was 479 over 88. Both very respectable and give you some indication of the difference you're getting here with the lack of that six gigahertz access. Now the next test was a little over five meters away. However, I conducted it with two household walls between me and the AP there. And this was conducting the same test, downloading a 10 gigabyte file. And this was a very interesting test. The reason being, because this is when things like MLO and having three bands to play with on the U7 Pro actually made things a little messy. Downloading that 10 gigabyte file on the U7 Pro actually took slower than on any other device. It took 13 minutes and 31 seconds. Now, there were a few anomalies there, and again, as mentioned, if I'd hard-locked the device to specific connections and I'd stopped it having access to lower frequencies and it wouldn't have been searching, it might have gone better. But the result was, because it was trying to find the best connection, it kept hopping between 1.4, 1.9 and 2.8 gigabits per second when it could between the three bands, even going as low at one point as 800 megabits. The result was that it took longer. Now you compare that against the U7 wall and the U7 light, the U7 wall was the quickest at five minutes and one second, only hopping between 1.2 and 1.4 gigabits per second. So very small changes and not as erratic as it was on the U7 Pro. Now in the case of the U7 Lite, the U7 Lite hard locked to 720 megabits per second. So it was slower than the U7 Wall at eight minutes and two seconds. However, it consistently stayed on that locked connection, not trying to bounce me around too much. Now again, this might have been that the U7 Pro, having all of those extra bands and more under the hood, was dancing around a lot more. And again, perhaps a retest would have brought that number down, but the consistency of the wall and the light there had to be applauded. The final test I conducted was with a Wi-Fi 7 Google Pixel phone at 20 and 30 meters outside, directly accessing each of the APs one after the other. Uh, we were looking at the decibel milliwatt, uh, and again, you want it to live between 30 uh, at the lowest and 90 at the very highest. Again, any more than that, you really are in trouble. Now, at the 20 meters mark there on the U7, it was at 66 dBm, and that was maintaining the six gigahertz, 320 megahertz connection at 620 
12 over 980 megabits per second. The U7 wall, obviously, alongside the light was lower, not accessing the six gigahertz um, frequency there, but in the case of the wall, it managed to use MLO to establish a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz connection at 40 and 80 megahertz, and that was 146 over 154 plus 16 over 907, and in the case of the U7 Lite, that went uh, 54 dBm, but that maintained a connection to the 5 gigahertz connection at 80, and that was 680 over 1080 as well. So really nice numbers there for both of those. Obviously, it would have been nice if we could have accessed the 6 gigahertz connection, but then we also have to factor in longer distances do weaken on the 6 gigahertz connection, favoring 5 gigahertz and then into 2.4 as you get further and further away. So we moved into a 30 meter connection distance and the um, DBM on the U7 Pro went to 70. And then from there, it dropped to 720 megabits over 367 megabits. How did that compare with the wall and the light? The wall maintained its MLO uh, dual frequency connection at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And that was at 40 and 80 megahertz, um, 480 megahertz packets respectively. And that was 146 over 172 and 17 over 306 megabits per second. Again, I'm not going to say better or worse than the Pro. I'd say it was a solid number backed up by the MLO supporting Wi-Fi 7. And in the case of the light, it maintained a single 5 gigahertz, 80 mega, um, megahertz connection. Uh, and it, that's when it dipped to 70 dBA and it dropped to 136 over 324 megabits per second. Overall, both the light and the wall gave me respectable numbers at the 20 and 30 meter point. And it did make me wonder about if I introduced further access points to bounce from these, what I would have achieved. But also in the case of the wall, I was really happy with uh, maintaining that performance, a much quicker switch over to the MLO, particularly if I had had a physical 2.5 gig devices connected to its available two additional ports. Now, I just threw a whole bunch of jargon at you in that. The long and short of it is that these Wi-Fi points here, even though they are much smaller and lack the six gigahertz frequency support that the Pro and the Pro Max have still give very respectable numbers. I think where you may hit a wall with these is when you're going to be hitting a much busier, denser Wi-Fi 7 environment. Remember, the Pro and the Pro Max not only have the six gigahertz frequency there, but in the case of the Pro Max, you can do 10 spatial streams. On top of that, it can support well over 500 clients, whereas these can only support 200 clients. And the six gigahertz frequency opens up more bandwidth for those larger connections to enjoy MLO. And even if they're not enjoying it, it means there is just more space on each of the bands for all of your devices to live and expand their muscles. These, on the other hand, lacking the six gigahertz fre frequency mean that they're gonna be good for more modest setups, not just in terms of the number of active unified clients, but generic general clients as well. But I can't fault the distance coverage on either of these, despite them being much smaller, despite the fact them being two times two on both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz frequencies, they really did deliver. And again, at 99 nicker and 149, you can't really fault it. Bottom line, if you're expanding your network, your Unify network and all of your wireless APs, I would say if you were looking at the light, scale up, spend the extra 70, 80 nicker and get a Pro. Maybe not a Pro Max, but I would still recommend going for that if you are looking at more than 10 to 15 active devices at any given time. But it's the wired connections in the wall that really stood out for me. I know this is designed for that vertical deployment against a wall, whereas this can give you up um, and the side, but this is the one that really stood out for me. And I think the wall is the better choice between the light and the wall, but it really is up to you and your deployment. Now, the written review is still not completed on these. I'm working on that right now alongside our follow-up video on the UCG fiber. Hopefully, they'll be ready very, very soon. If you have found this video helpful, unsurprisingly, there are links in the description to get hold of these devices for yourselves. And if you found the video helpful, and if you were gonna go to those shops anyway, really, really important, make sure those two things are true, please use the links in the description to get hold of them. It gives us a small commission, and it allows us, me and Eddie, it's just us doing this, allowing us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.